everyone, it's me, Darlene. I am here in my ripped up house shirt that is so comfy to talk to you about music on YouTube and the types of music you are able to use and what kind of attributions you should always be including in your description box of your videos. So what I'm going to do is step by step show you on the computer what I'm talking about and we're going to start with the audio library that YouTube offers us. When we get to the screen of YouTube's audio library, I will be showing you that some of the music has attributions that you must put in your description, some don't. Here's why you still need to put something in your description. If anybody wants to file a copyright complaint against you, they can. YouTube doesn't do any kind of research. They will contact you and say you've had a copyright issue come up and you have to be able to prove that the song that you used was okay. If you don't put any attribution at all, you will not remember the name of the song you used, where you got it, what the attributions were. So to protect yourself, you want to know all that info. So I always suggest you put it in the descriptions and I will show you exactly how I do that. In other words, the more info you put, the better. That doesn't mean that you're still allowed to use the music because one thing that most people don't realize any artist can change the licensing of their music at any time. So something that is absolutely free to use and able to be used in a monetized video next year might not have that same license. So you want to know exactly what the license was when you used the music. And if they change the license, we're supposed to be responsible to take that music out of our video. I don't think anybody would really enforce that at this point. The only thing that would happen is if the license changes and the artist goes into YouTube and starts looking for all the videos who used it when they were allowed to, the most that will happen is at that point, YouTube would not let you monetize that video, so you would lose the monetization. But that can happen at any time. So let me take you to the audio library inside YouTube, and we'll start with that. When you are in your YouTube account, you go to your Creator Studio, you scroll down to Create, and you will see Audio Library and Music Policies, and we'll be looking at both of those. I highly suggest, if you are new to YouTube, use the music inside YouTube. They have tons to choose from, and even though it's not a perfect system, you can still get flagged, even by using their music, you have a better chance of getting YouTube to realize that you didn't do anything wrong. Here you have free music and free sound effects. Free music. Let's look at this one for the heck of it. Okay, so here's an example of one that says you're free to use this song and monetize your video. That has nothing there about attributions. Let's come back to that. Let's find one with attributions. Here's one. You're free to use this song and monetize your video, but you must include the following in your video description. Can't get any easier than this. So let me open up one of my descriptions and show you how I do that. This happens to be this Ride Along with Darlene and Skylar in Memphis video. I, I have my screen open where I make edits. This is a good one to use as an example because I have both kinds of YouTube music in this video. I put it at the bottom of my description box, doesn't have to be at the top, it can just be anywhere in there. I used five songs in this video. Here is one right here that requires the attributions. So when I'm in the audio library, I just highlight the attributions, I right click and copy it, and then I go to YouTube in my description box and I would paste that right here. That is all you need to do for that. Those are very, very easy. It tells the kind of license and all the stuff that you need to know. For these that just say you are free to use this song and monetize your video, yeah, you're free to do that, but you're also responsible for remembering what that song is, where you got it, what the license was. So here is what I do. Here's one right here. Song number one. I just take the title and who it's by and then I say this. So this one was On My Way Home was the song by the 126ers. And then I always include this little bit. YouTube Free Music Library. No attribution needed. So I know right away what that song is, who 
has the license for it. It's the 126ers, and I know that I got it from inside YouTube and that it did not need any attribution. So if I got flagged for that, I would be able to dispute it and say, hey, look, this is what I used. This is how I used it because I was allowed to. Now let's go over to music policies. This will give you music that we know from famous people and tell you if and how you are able to use it. Let's look, I saw Bruno down here somewhere. Where is he? Up, down, funk. Okay, I'm gonna click on that. If I wanted to play this, it's viewable worldwide, meaning there are no blocked countries. If you use a song that is in blocked countries, then that video itself won't even show up in those countries. So you like one that says viewable worldwide, but look, you can't monetize your video. You just can't. And don't fall for the, oh, five seconds of music thing. It does not matter. You can have two seconds of the song in your video and you can get nailed for that. You're not going to get in trouble. What, what YouTube will do will just take away your monetization. It will still be monetized, but you get none of the money. They control it at that point. If you perform a cover, it's still viewable worldwide and you are eligible for revenue sharing. And in that case, you're going to have to click the little I and go over to learn more. I haven't done that yet. I haven't done the learn more. If you are doing a car vlog, do not ever have your radio on because you will lose all monetization for that video. If you were to use one of these songs for whatever reason, you would still want to put something in your description that lets you know that you got it from here and and what you were allowed or not allowed to do. So if you get questioned, there's no confusion. And I did want to point out, see that it says right here that copyright owners can change their policies or take action on your video. That differs from what's described here. They can do that at any time. They can change their policies. So you always want to know what song you have, who wrote it, who's playing it, what you were allowed to do at the time, and, you know, I would even just like maybe copy some of this and put it in the description or put it in a file where you know which video had this. But you can always just put something in the description that will remind you. That's the easiest way. When I get flagged for music, I go to my own description, which, which would look like this, like you can see in my description box, and the links turn clickable. So I can see exactly what I have in this video and I know right away how I got it what kind of license I had, did I have permission or not. So it just makes my argument that much more clear. And again, if you ever get flagged, you need to tell YouTube, please go look at my description box. It's all there because they won't. They, if, they, if you get flagged, they just let you know. They don't have time to investigate. You have to do all that dirty work. I also want to talk for just a minute about sound effects. When you click on sound effects, you will see sound effects if they ever can pop up. These don't provide any attributions at all. Like if I click on it, nothing opens. I just hear the sound. If you use a sound effect, you should still always put where you got it. If I use any of these sounds, I still put in my description the name of the sound, who was responsible for that sound, and then I also say it was in the YouTube free audio library because it was. You just want to always know where you got any music or any sound that you did not yourself create. Okay, let's go back to the camera now. I wanted to show you more like other places you can get music, but I have decided I'm going to do that in little videos. This is probably the longest video because I'm showing you like what's inside YouTube Again, as a beginner, absolutely start out by using what YouTube provides you and keep track in the description box. Do exactly like they say. For the ones that need attribution, you just copy and paste that. You're good. For the ones that don't need attribution, remember, if somebody flags you, you are going to have to know where the music is that you used, the name, who wrote it, all that stuff. Some people like to just cause trouble. And if they hear that you have something in your video and they look down in your description box and there's no mention of it, they'll just flag you. 
because they just feel like it. People do things like that all the time. So just protect yourself and put what you need to put in the description box. And remember that that does not cover your butt because the artists can change their licensing at any time. It sounds scary and complicated in, it, in the way it is, but in the way it's just so simple. Have it in your description box what you used and where you got it. It will at least cover your butt to that extent. And I do want to mention that there is a gigantic difference between free music and music that can be used in monetizing a video. Free music means you're going to download it for free. But like in Free Music Archives, and I will be talking about that source for free music next, there's tons and tons of music in there. Every one of them can have a different license. You have to make sure you click through, find if there's a license in there that allows you to monetize your video if you use that song. So I think we'll chat about that one next. I tend to stay away from those only because I have enough to choose from inside YouTube, so I just do what's easy. And if you are using music that someone created for you, like say if I have Derek just doing some bass guitar playing for me, I would still in that description say music by Derek Michaud. If he has a website, I would link to his website. If he doesn't know what kind of a license he's giving me, I would just say used by permission from artist, you know, and a date, something, whatever. You have to be clear because if not, now somebody else can just take it and think they can use it, and they're not supposed to. If Derek gives me permission to use his music, that doesn't mean every Tom, Dick, and Harry has permission to use it. So, you know, say, used by permission from artists, and then, you you know, if it's something that you really want to protect, you can say, if interested in using this music, contact Derek Mishu, stuff like that. Better safe than sorry, that's all I can say, but for the most part, you will not get banned. You won't lose your account, but you can. One of the YouTube creators that I follow, Tim Schmoyer, lost like three years, I want to say, of videos. Just poof, his whole video career gone because of copyright infringement. They had to start over from scratch, and he was very sad because this was family vlogs and stuff, and they lost three years of what they thought was souvenirs of their life <laughs> you know it was just poof they didn't have them saved so sometimes lessons are learned the hard way but then they share their experiences and they try to you know protect others like i'm trying to do with you don't take chances with music protect your butt as best as you can and expect that that's still not a perfect system just do the best you can thank you so much for watching i'll be back with more soon bye